and why don't we just push the limits and see how fast we can take this with just one hand. All right, so now let me show you what's happening here and break down each one of these techniques and also show you a few of my other favorites. So the first one, that regular push-pull. We are in the French grip here, and for this technique, you know, if you don't know French grip, it means your thumb is facing the ceiling. For this technique, I actually use a little bit of my index finger and these fingers, and the key thing to remember for this one is your thumb. For this particular push-pull, your thumb is gonna be part of the driving force with this. So now, getting started here, we're gonna start in this position with our wrist back like that and our thumb. I'm gonna call it the priming position. It's kind of primed us to get ready for this technique. So my fingers are curled in. We're gonna start here. Now, the first stroke, we're gonna push down and our fingers are right away gonna extend like that. So there you go again, priming position, thumb is back, push down, fingers are out. Now the second one, our sticks gonna come down and then we're gonna pull our fingers back in again, pull our thumb back in this priming position to start us up here again. One question I do get asked sometimes by students is where my fingers are sitting, or sorry, where the stick is sitting in my fingers. I have it sitting kind of in these first knuckles right here. It just feels really comfortable. And uh, I, I same with the index here. And the thumb is just right on top like that. So you're pushing down with your, with your thumb and you're opening with your fingers and then you're pulling back. The key thing is to make sure your fingers are going straight here and that you're coming back again and your wrist is coming back and look how my stick is here. It's coming back almost vertically. This is at least just in the slow tempo to get you started. It's the exaggerated version. So now as I start to speed this up a little bit, you notice the motions get smaller. My stick isn't coming all the way back here anymore, uh, but I am maintaining this nice sort of motion between the thumb and fingers, and you'll see that happening. I'm also using a rebound now from the pad to help. And if it starts to feel really comfortable when you, get, when you can get really kind of like lock this in, it starts really flowing well, and you can get some incredible speed with just one hand. One drummer to check out who is the master of this technique, someone who inspired me to push mine a little bit is Ramon Montagner. Follow him on Instagram and YouTube. Incredible drummer. So there's only one issue with this technique and that is that it will make you addicted with just trying all sorts of crazy things and you may ruin a few good dinner parties, but you know, we're drummers, so that's what you have to live with. But you know, here's, here's what I mean. So, you know, you can, you can do this with a knife, fork, so already you're at the dinner table, your date is finished. Now you can do it with this hanger thing. You know, pencils. People in the workplace won't know what hit them. You know, scissors and a piece of firewood. Now I would like to break down the next one here. It's one uh, that I use a little more often than this one actually compared to that one. So this next one is in German grip and we're gonna turn our wrist over now. So our thumb is a little bit more off to the side and I use it a bit more often because I feel like I don't have to make too much of a grip change and my thumb doesn't have to do too much of a shift. So that's why I use this one a little bit more often. And I might use it kind of when I'm playing some up-tempo jazz music and I wanna vary the ride pattern, get some kind of Tony Williams inspired ideas going. It just works well for getting those fives out. Anyways, so let me show you what's going on here. So German grip, uh, for this particular one with the stick grip, I actually like to let my index finger rest a little bit more as a guide here. And to start out, 
we're gonna pull our wrist back like this again. Stick is, you know, vertical here. And my wrist is back, fingers are here. I'm gonna throw the stick down. It's gonna come back. And if you notice, just like the other one, my fingers have opened up now to get out of the way. So that's our first stroke. Second stroke, stick is falling down. And now we're just gonna pull our fingers back into the starting position. One, two. Push, pull. So if you notice, just like that first one, even at this tempo, I'm trying to really let these motions flow into one another. It's not really staccato like this. I feel like if you practice it slow that way, it'll start to feel a little bit stiff and staccato when you speed it up. So that's why I like to, you know, get the motions to flow into one another because then we start picking up the speed. You know, you don't have that weird staccato thing happening. One other thing you'll notice is that I use my wrist here to help kind of like pump this technique, I guess. So you notice that uh, I can also get a little bit more power compared to that first one. A little bit more power and our wrist can be used uh, to sort of help with that power. Wrist and fingers. All right, next technique. I'm gonna shift over to traditional grip because I'm a traditional grip player. So I'm gonna show you a couple of those that I like to use. Uh, first one we're gonna do is just a regular push-pull. And my starting position is now like this. So our wrists are gonna be turned up like this, stick vertical, and fingers are curled back. Thumb is just on top and it's gonna be resting right there on top of that finger for now. So now I'm gonna throw the stick down and my fingers are now straight, just like we've been doing. And that's our first stroke. Next stroke, we're gonna make that happen and pull our fingers in like that and then turn our wrist back over. So if you also notice, when I'm throwing this down, my wrist is, is also turning at the same time as well, which adds to the power. I'm not just staying in one position like this the whole time. I'm using this turning and opening of my wrist to help this. So first and second, we're pulling back here. Open, now we're closing our fingers, pulling it in push the stick forward, pull it back. And notice how these two fingers are coming open and my, my grips are a little more, more, more loose now. When I'm pulling back, my wrist goes from this to coming back a little bit. It, it turns a little bit like that when I come back over the first one. Next, we have another traditional grip one and it offers a little bit more power. And it's this thing, this motion of like turning our wrist over like that, uh, which is again, another technique made famous by the great Han Benink, who is this really animated, fun to watch free jazz drummer. I've seen him in concerts uh, once. It was really entertaining and really cool. And he is a master of this technique and I thought it was quite cool and I was first introduced to it by watching Jojo Mayer's DVD. So it looks like that. A little bit strange looking, uh, but it does actually start to feel a little bit more natural when you spend some more time with it. Um, but yeah, it definitely does look a bit strange. And like I mentioned, you can get some more power with it because we're using some bigger motions now. All right, so this one, starting position is a sort of the same thing here as the first one I was showing but we're gonna turn our wrist over and come across the head like that. So you notice my wrist is open or palm up. Now palm is facing down. It's this turning motion like that. And you gotta make the stroke happen when you're turning over. Now the second one, we're just pulling back with our fingers a little bit to make that happen. And I'm turning my wrist back over.
Now when I start to speed up a little bit, I use a bit of rebound from the head and uh, my finger or my thumb stays on top of this finger here. All right, so that's that one. It's kind of like this swivel action going on here. You can kind of mix this one with a bit of that first one to add a little bit of power. So you can use some fingers to help pull the stick here, as well as turn the wrist over. And help a little bit with speed and power there. Now, one other one I wanna show you is not really one that I use much, but some pipe drummers who are more used to keeping their thumb on top of the stick and not really using these fingers to help like that, they might find this one a little bit more natural to play. Uh, so this one, like I'm mentioning for the pipe drummers who often will play like this, and their thumb is often you know, on top of the stick and, and doing all of that. This one is called the drop bounce. You might be familiar with that. And it's very similar to that first one I'm showing, but instead of like pulling with their fingers and pulling back like that, think about dropping the stick and just kind of catching it in there like that. And you notice my thumb is always on top there. So I don't use this technique very often. Um, so I don't have the speed and power, but I just wanted to show you that it could be something that if you find these other ones are not very comfortable, check out this one, check out the drop bounce. It might be something that works for you, especially if you're a pipe drummer. So last, we have this gravity blast one that sounds kind of the most like the single stroke roll with one hand. So for this particular one, um, I'm back in this German grip position, and that is sort of the grip I use. Not all of my fingers are on the stick, but uh, my middle finger here, my thumb and index are kind of acting as, you know, the fulcrum grip, all of that stuff in, in one here. So the first note we're gonna make, it's, it's a little bit different on a practice pad compared to your drum, because I don't have the rim here that gets, you know, this is like one even level surface. Uh, but you can still kind of get the same idea going with this. So we're going to try hit the tip of the stick here and we're going to use the rim or edge of the pad now to rest the middle of the stick on and we're just going to push down and I'm using my kind of like bicep forearm muscle to control the stick. Push down. Now the second one we're just going to lift back up and then the stick will make the, the note on its own. So there you have it. That's the four different variations of push-pull that I like to use, plus the drop bounce, which I don't often use, but I wanted to show it anyways. And also, I, I broke down this gravity blast thing. So I hope that was helpful for you. And, uh, you know, once you have these things mastered, you have the right hand going, the left hand going, uh, check out some different rudimental ideas. You know, you can play actually like a single stroke roll, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can play flams. Have fun. Let me know in the comments which one was your favorite. And uh, I hope you have a great rest of the day.